Hi, welcome back. And the um, we're going to continue on with our videos about compounds. We just finished looking at ionic compounds, and now we're going to move on to molecular compounds. Um, what makes these different from ionic compounds uh, is how the is how the compound is actually put together, how it's bonded. Uh, a molecule is formed uh, when we have two non-metals that uh, get together and share electrons. It's called a covalent bond, and that's when two non-metallic atoms again get together, and they're going to share their um, they're going to share their their outermost electrons or their valence electrons. Uh, so they haven't been able to bond with uh, a metal ion or a cation uh, to exchange electrons. Uh, now what we're going to do is they're actually going to get together and um, ex not exchange, but actually share these. The example that we're going to look at today, uh, that I'm going to use here today, is uh, in water. Now we know that water is made uh, when atoms are sharing electrons. So how is this done? Well, here we have uh, Bohr models of hydrogen and uh, oxygen atoms. And we know that with oxygen, it has a total of uh, eight um, electrons in the atom. So that will put two in the innermost shell, and then that's going to put six in the, other most, in the outermost shell. Now that leaves a space here and a space here for it to pick up an electron to have its outermost shell, uh, its outermost shell full or complete, uh, which is what it wants to do. And hydrogen wants to do the same thing. It only has one electron, and so in order for its outermost shell to be filled, it wants to gain another electron, put another electron down over here. But with water, when water is formed, it um, because it's not going to exchange electrons when it forms uh, when it bonds with hydrogen it's going to hydrogen is going to share its electron here and here it's going to share an electron and then the reverse would be true that uh, oxygen is going to share an electron back uh, the other way so again a covalent bond is when electrons are shared between atoms not transferred between atoms like we had an ionic bonding uh, and this is a really important thing to remember so again this is a, a covalent bond is when a molecule forms and we have a sharing of electrons not an exchange of electrons or a transfer of electrons okay so when we name these uh, we're going to look at uh, adding we're going to put the prefix first then the name of the first element prefix name of the second element and then prefix name of the third element if there is a third one because there can be more than three. There might not just be, um, there might just not be two nonmetals put together. So when we look at the first one, we're going to call this carbon dioxide. So a couple of things that we need to, a couple of rules that we need to pay attention to. First of all, if we have a lone, um, and if we have a lone uh, atom here, we're not going to call it mono to begin with. Uh, the very first one we leave blank if it's if it's all by itself. If it's di, you'll see that later on when we get down here, we're going to list it. But in this one, we're just going to call it carbon, and then of course dioxide. And we always use the name of the anion when we name these. Okay, the second one, carbon. And now we're going to look on our chart. Tetrachloride. Okay, here we go. P2Br6. So this is diphosphorus. And now hexabromide. Okay, and our last one is penta nitrogen. Octa sulfide. Okay, so again, we use the when we when we name the first one, we're going to use the full name of the atom. The last one, we are always going to use the anion. So we've just finished looking at how to go from the formula to the name. Now we're going to look at going from the name to the formula. This is actually really simple. Um, I'm not spending a lot of time doing this because, uh, or a lot of videos compared to the ionic one, 
um, because this is so very basic. We don't have to worry about balancing any charges because there aren't any charges to balance. So basically we're just looking at our periodic table. We find the symbol for arsenic, which is AS. Tetra tells us that there's four of them. Oxide, Deca tells us that there's 10. Now, if we have uh, a vowel in here, uh, sometimes we drop the vowel, sometimes we don't. Most of the time we do. So here it's deca. Instead of saying deca oxide, we just call it deca oxide. Uh, bromine tetra, or sorry, bromine trioxide is Br. There is no mono in front of it, but we know that it is one trioxide, O3. Boron nitride, no prefixes at all. So it's just B. N and then dinitrogen trioxide, same thing, very simple. Dinitrogen N2O3. Uh, again, this is just a matter of practice, um, getting used to and understanding what the prefixes are. Uh, you won't have too much trouble doing this. Uh, the prefixes are even uh, in your data booklets, uh, so you won't have to memorize them. I suggest you memorize them, it's not too difficult to memorize. Um, practice these just like we've done with all of them. Uh, naming compounds is so important uh, for when we get to balancing chemical equations later on in, uh, in the chemistry section. Uh, again, just practice and uh, you'll get good at it. We'll see you in class. Science.